Friday morning, kids are dropped off. It's this day, my one day a week run. This is gonna be a good run, I'm looking forward to it. It's it's only gonna look like a run, really it's meditation. This is getting, if, if, if meditation for me is present, aware, noticing, engaged, I hit those trails, it's meditation de facto. See you in a bit. And I'm back, three miler, single track, feeling really good. All right, at the end, I'm still early, I only took a three miler. The problem is, is I want to run in the morning, but that's when I get my best writing done. And right now, the deadline of the book is way more important than running, although I'm planning on running my entire 50K route the day before the race, so I kind of I kind of need to be running a little bit more. Good morning, Ricardo. Morning, Sydney. Hi, Joe. Hi, Sid. You're so bright and shiny this morning. Yes, it's Friday. <laughs> And it is time to go home, long day. But I'm gonna try to get some riding done tonight. I have been in such a groove, my God. Down here? I'm trying to. I'm trying to fix my dad's um, back of this. Yeah. Who's that on the floor? Bree texted me last night and said, you want to run in the morning? And I checked the weather report and I begged off. And now I'm kind of regretting it. I don't know. It's definitely rained. It just didn't rain that hard. Oh, by the way, have you guys ever seen, did I ever show you this cup? I have a series of these. It's like a recreation of that popular New York cup that you see in movies all the time. And it's just like a ceramic version. In 1994 alone, they sold over 500 million cups. And today, the Amphora Cup has reached full-blown icon status. It was from Museum of Modern Art years ago. Now you can get them on Amazon and everything, but this was like the original that my cousin bought me. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. By the way, it's kind of a point of interest. My cousin was named Hillman Curtis. I say was because he passed away a while ago. Um, but he was a brilliant uh, internet pioneer guy and did some online, uh, he was like one of the first people to do online content, like movies that were just for the internet. A couple of them I acted in, I'll leave you a, a link down there. Uh, one of them won a Webby Award that I was in for like best drama, it was pretty cool, these little shorts he would do, it's super cool, hillmancurtis.com, just check them out. I've taken a writing in my room for a couple reasons. One, it's quiet, two, fairly comfortable, Three, my podcast studio where I could write. My daughter had a sleepover a couple weeks ago and still it's ransacked. We're playing a little battle of time, which is which one of us is gonna flinch first and clean the damn room. Until that time, it's here because I need to get freaking work done and I don't have time or energy to clean my own podcast studio. Okay, there's a fourth reason too of why I work back here. A BB-8 pillowcase. I don't know why it helps me write. I'm not gonna question it. Got a good focus, a bit of writing done. Now I'm heading down to Mendo to drop my kids off at a birthday party, then to the inn to visit my buddy, who's visiting, Colleen Holland. 
who is the publisher owner of Veg News Magazine. That's Veg News. In fact, who's that Yul Brenner lookalike mofo? Okay, at the end. Didn't get a chance to run earlier, but I brought my running clothes. If I get done with this soon enough, I'll do a quick run before I pick the kids up. There she is, Colleen Holland. I already introduced you, everybody knows who you are anyway. Oh, oh. how are you? How's it going? The last time we hung was in Portland. Exactly. Which was a couple years ago. Yeah, so was it? I was wondering I think it was. was. It wasn't last year, it was the year before. Well, I saw you guys at the book signing too for- Yes, for John and Chess thing. Yeah, 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 yes. exactly. But we, we yes. hanging Portland. Those were good times. That good was a good event. Good to see you again. I'm leaving on a scale of one to 10, how much will you miss me? One being not very much, 10 being a ton. Really? That's the scale? Zero. I'm just grabbing the kids. So good to see Colleen. She's awesome. There is a kid beating a pinata to the point of obli literally oblivion. You're going up. They're playing checkers, that's peaceful. They had started with chess, got into an argument about chess. Uh, my son left the game, came up to us, asked if he could play chess on an iPad because, quote, it would be against something that wouldn't argue with me. We suggested checkers. Can I just hide behind you? That's easier for no. me. Tonight, guys, for dinner, we are doing falafel night. Luna's away on a sleepover. We have a kid sleeping over at our house. Falafel Land is one of these like super easy throw together meals that's that's it's comparatively healthy but it's just quick to do like the greatest family meal ever right right and we use gluten free wraps not because gluten's going to kill you it's unless you're celiac uh but we just like these we like them lettuce tomato kalamata olives hummus tahini and last but not least falafel mix yes it's a mix it tastes it's, good. It is. It's easy. Yeah, and they, they recommend to like fry it in oil. We just do a like a light spray and then we broil it. Kids build. Okay, so we should have done pepperoncinis, but somebody forgot the pepperoncinis too, cut. Too. We'll probably use jalapenos. Highly recommend this hot sauce yes. over all other hot sauces, Cholula, for no reason other than it's just the perfect match. It just makes it. We chop everything up. We broil the falafel. And it gets crispy and everyone builds their own. This is for the tahini sauce. It's kind of my creation. I made it up. So I'm just going to mix it up first before I do anything else so it's smooth. I don't measure anything. I sort of do this to taste and look. I'm going to just throw in some lemon juice here. There we go. I might add more. I'm going to mix that around. Add water. I want this to be more of a sauce and not a paste. So. Okay, that's getting pretty smooth. All right, this is my secret ingredient that most people don't put in a tahini sauce. It's um, a little ume plum vinegar. It's just nice and salty and it has some tang and instead of adding salt, I usually add, just add this. So now I'm gonna put some spices in. I'll put some parsley, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, I don't usually put too much in. And paprika, or as Sid would say, I had a farm in paprika. Paprika, I know, it's just good. You don't want to overdo it. And that's kind of how I like it. I don't, I like it sort of thick, but you know, enough so, like runny enough so we can drizzle it. But that's just us. We can make it thicker or thinner depending on how. Perfect. God, yeah. great. That's excellent. 
super fast. You didn't really measure stuff, huh? It's all It's just taste. a taste. It's easy. Doubles as an amazing salad dressing, I by was, the way. I, I did. Damn it, she's good. <laughs> all right, we are prepped. We made the falafel. We made the tahini sauce. Now I'm going to show you how to put a, a, a correct one together. This is how it's done. Start with your wrap, whatever it is. A little uh, toasty over the flame. A little hummus. Boom. Falafel thing, I just crumble on there like that. Tomato. Avocado. Kalamata olive. Lettuce. Tahini. And then, Cholula. Wrap it. Oh, boom. I love you. I'll see you later. Got a class at the inn, running very late. Just found out though that Jackson Long is coming. Thought for food lifestyle. He's coming up, he's gonna stay. He's on the road, he's gonna stay with me. So this is cool. He wasn't, he was coming, then he wasn't coming. Now he's coming again, these kids. Catholic school, as vicious as Roman rule. I got my knuckles bruised by a lady in black. What's up, dude? How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. Jackson Law. What's I up, small steppers? Done. Word up. Yeah, I just got done. I had no idea you were coming up here, and so I didn't, have my, I didn't have my... <laughs> oh, that's, that's almost inappropriate. That class went really well. Jackson is here, as you saw. He's gonna follow me home now. I gotta watch out for him driving. He's from Colorado, so he's probably high. Hey, are you ready to go? I shouldn't walk and drive. <laughs> Okay, I got a few things to talk about here, but first of all, check this out. Boom, TFF lifestyle. Pretty sweet, right? Jackson and I traded t-shirts. Sorry for this like random tangent, but in the mail last week, I got a box of two packs of this. It's my favorite coffee. I mentioned it on a podcast and a listener must have sent it. If that was you, let me know who you are because there's no note. But thank you, this is amazing and you guys are so kind to send me a gift, it's amazing. This one, this is the second bag, it's already halfway done. It's gone, it's out of there. I wanna talk about meditation, what, 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 what I think about it. Before I even get into it, no, don't get your, your panties in a bunch over this, okay? I think meditation is fantastic, it's great. I'm just saying that it can not be nearly enough. Like, I think exercise is phenomenal. I run in the morning, I think it's great, we, it's great. But I don't think it's enough when you exercise first thing in the morning and then just sit on your ass all day and do no movement at all. I think in addition to a partitioned exercise first thing in the morning kind of model, I think it's important to build in movement throughout your day, what I've called integrated exercise. The same thing goes for meditation. I think it's great to you know do your 20 minutes or 30 minutes if you can swing that, but I don't think that's enough for most of us to just sort of do that and then enter a world where we're just bombarded by the stress of living and we have that 20 minutes, but that's not enough to kind of keep us centered and keep us calm and keep us present. I think we need to, in addition to a partition meditation routine, build in meditation in little moments throughout the day. That is what I mean when I talk about, you know, a deep breath once every hour, or a couple deep breaths once every hour. It's how do you live in the world meditatively? How do you embody calm and presence and awareness and perspective? How do you embody that while you're living your life, not, not separating yourself during that time on your pillow, but when you're in your life, when you're at your job, when you're with your family, when you're at the, in the carpool, when you're in your commute, how do you then embody what you get from your 20 minutes on the pillow? For most people, it's once they leave that meditation pillow, all the rest of the crap that they deal with in their heads and otherwise comes flooding back in. Let's face it, we meditate because we want to live better. We meditate because it makes us feel better, it connects us to ourselves. For me, it comes down to this. Our ability to live well, our ability to be successful individually as a human being, 
is way less about how effectively we can check out of our lives and instead way more about how effectively we can check in. Hollywood operation. It, totally. So there's our there's our screen. So what do you want to do? Yeah. So we'll get both get I off. I think I think we. Where's your mark? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here. Yeah, cause I need to get I need to get like yeah. here. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you ready? Here we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> position. Yeah. So when we get your position and then quickly.